match this to. And um, okay. it'll be just a little thick. So it kind of will have some dagger. Yeah, more than two plus the other one. Two and four times. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Well, I'm going to give you a chance to not always actually. Uh, this semester, I'm just going to be teaching voice lessons. What, what are you going to do? Where are you going to be? 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 Where are you going to be?
summer, I was like, out of just, yeah, 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 yeah. Day yeah. Off, it's not and they were just like throwing a football yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was using it for sports. I was like, never throw a
Yes. Yeah, she, yeah, she, is, she owns the place. Yes. Binks and Gizmo. Uh, they're full blood brother sister. He's a little, a little longer, but yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, carrying both of them. Yeah. Yeah, you can carry your cats like a little bit. Sometimes they try and get into the lab. Yeah. Whenever I'm in my office chair, one has to be behind me and the one is on my lap as well. Yeah. Yeah. Organic. Uh,
looks like on this um, like gauzy stuff, right? And it is draped there. It's beautiful. Well, let's stay here for just a second, okay? Let's read this.
locked down during the COVID pandemic, and so I ended up staying in Australia for two years. So the research is really a research out of two years being in Australia. Um, but it's called Making Keen. And uh, essentially, the idea behind this is trying to think about how we can begin to connect to different associations, different elements within our surroundings um, that can make us more appreciative of, of our environment, of the natural environment, of our ecosystems. And one of the things that has been disturbing me as an artist for many years has been the fact that we haven't really been addressing the issue of waste and the issue of the carbon footprint we produce in the art industry. And it has always been like <laughs> a thorn under my skin because I know that the materials we use are toxic, are synthetic, and oftentimes um, harmful to the environment. And so I was thinking of doing a research that would help me uh, consider other materials that I can use that would also be aesthetically pleasing while at the same time uh, would allow me to contribute to the solution of our ecological problem. And um, in essence, I started experimenting with different materials, organic materials that I could find within my surroundings, including my own food waste. So um, I began to collect banana peels, orange peels, carrot peels, potato peels, the, especially the sweet ones that you can't really uh, consume, um, and different kinds of vegetables that would go bad in my fridge. And I decided that I was going to do something with them. And I had started researching about what to do with them, and the word bioplastic popped up. And so I started to think about how do I make bioplastic with my food waste so I don't have to trust them. So I, I, I began a new series of experiments with the bioplastic idea in mind. And so a little later, I came up with a process, a homemade process, where I would take them and puree them and add a few other um, uh, eco-friendly, bio-friendly substances, including starch, glycerin, cornstarch, and um, vinegar. And then I was able to produce these sheets of bioplastic, very crude indeed, and not like the very science-based bioplastic where they kind of extract the polymers and add other things to it and create these like beautiful uh, plastic looking things. My bioplastic was looking like um, a fruit roll up. <laughs> and um, I thought, well, this is great. This is a good step towards the right direction. Now, what can I do with this? So I made them in very small samples, and I liked the texture. I liked what they were doing, and um, how they were sort of like giving me an, another uh, possibility with material use. And so I started to expand my thinking, uh, producing larger quantities, uh, thinking about what kinds of learning it was engaging, thinking about how I can bring in different conversations around the material that I was making. I didn't want it to just be in my studio about me, about my work. I wanted it to be something where I'm calling people's attention to say, hey, what do you think? What does this stuff, what kind of stuff do? How can we use it together? Can you make stuff like this with your own food waste? And so it became this call and response type of thing where I was calling to participants, calling to people to engage in my practice and my process, and also then beginning to think about what else was engaging in that process. Now, the piece that is on the front wall that I call waste, sorry, mold land, is a piece that really kind of um, triggered that thought a lot more vividly because I had created this large amount of bioplastic on one of those weekends. I was feeling very excited and energetic. And lo and behold, by the time I came back to my studio in Melbourne, um, I realized that all the sheets of bioplastic I had created were infested with fungi, mold. And so um, I was so deeply depressed and disappointed <laughs> because I had spent several hours, several days preparing the, the, the paste to make these bioplastic materials. And, um, but then I had spoken to some people and they said, you know, don't feel too bad. Maybe the bioplastic is inviting other kinds of natural um, elements, living things to 
participate in your work. And since your work is about participation, maybe you should see the other side of this um, engagement. And so I started thinking about the modes and what they were doing. I started questioning um, what it means when you, you put waste out there, which other organisms are infesting it, what kinds of negative impact is it having on us as humans. So when we put things in the landfill, what kinds of um, you know, bacterial elements are happening, or bacterial growth are happening there, and how is it impacting the atmosphere, how is it impacting our lives. And so the conversation kind of went beyond me, the bioplastic, to these other um, worldly and other um, uh, ethnic things. And so, from there, I kind of started to experiment with the materials in different ways. Of course, you can see with all the different um, bodies of work that I created that they're sort of experimental. I started first with photographing them uh, because I wanted to see what it looks like photographically. Initially, I didn't know what to do with them. I was like, hmm, I have all these little pieces, <laughs> some of them crackling, some of them just very dense. What do I do with it? And so I began to photograph them and um, do little studies. That was where I started from. And from then, I kind of became more comfortable with the material. I found that it could do a lot of things. And people were, and because I was bouncing it off people, I wasn't just working individually, uh, people were suggesting things to me. And when they do suggest things to me, I would respond by making something else. So. Um, I began working, so someone said to me, you know, you know what, why don't you make bioplastic and put it outdoors with nature? And I thought, aha, that's a great idea. And so I made some bioplastic material and then I hung them outside because I wanted them to interact and interface with the natural environment. And of course it disintegrated and I was happy because I knew that I wouldn't worry about them uh, harming the environment. So I left them out there and they disintegrated. And then someone said to me, you know, they're so transparent. Why don't you kind of make a, a big membrane or sheet with it? And so I did that. And I, 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 I did a small sample and I showed it to them. And they were like, whoa, this is great. Why don't you try this? And so we had this like back and forth with different um, participants. And I was learning from them. They were learning from me. I felt like it was expanding the conversation. It was no longer just about an artist working in isolation, making stuff and celebrating how beautiful it is but it's going beyond that. And so if you look at this wall on how to do bioplastic research, basically it is some assets from my uh, engagements with people and other elements in the environment um, about what bioplastic is and some of the learnings that come from that. And so I've done a few assets from interviews that I've had with people, including a lot of my colleagues here. <laughs> And I put them in for people to read, and I have some um, QR codes that people can uh, scan and see some of my processes that I, I use to make these bioplastic elements. Um, I have a, a, a rodent eating bioplastic because I realized that rodents also like the bioplastic, they're healthy snacks for them. And so I wanted to put in a piece, and this was Crystal's. Um, sample that she had put in her office and the rodents came and attacked it and I thought, wow, that's great. So rodents also like this stuff, it can feed them and it wouldn't be harmful to them. I mean, the flip side is that it is a material that is ephemeral, um, especially if exposed to the elements or exposed to certain kinds of animals. However, if well preserved, can stand on its own, can stand its ground. And so, um, I'm going to kind of stop talking because I feel like I've said, so, I've said a lot. <laughs> um, what I intend to do is to share samples, small samples of my bioplastic piece with everyone here. Hopefully I have enough. Um, just for you to feel and to kind of get a sense of what this material is and how interesting it is and the possibilities that there are. And when you're done with it, please take it outside and feed it to the plants or just leave it outside for the nature to take care of because it's biodegradable, it's totally harmless to the environment and it would be nice to have an art piece kind of become uh, spread into the environment. So I'd like to see the places that you, I'd like to 
believe that we would go far and wide based on where you're going to be going to this evening. So I would like to share my bioplastic and I'd also like to open the floor um, to anyone who has questions for me. I'd be delighted to answer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> how to 
and then collated, what to do with it, and um, then I tried my hands on new ideas, new things. I noticed this one has like the seeds still in it. Do you think um, by leaving it like on the earth, they might produce flour? Or? It, I think it's possible that they could. I need to try it out to know for sure. Um, in my early experimentations, I had um, placed some seeds, chai seeds, into like banana peels and put them outside. I thought they would sprout, but they didn't. So I don't know if there was some kind of chemical reaction that happened that prevented them from sprouting, but I would imagine that under the right conditions, they might sprout, they might germinate, so it's possible. Hi. Um, I'm so curious, you said like, you're research in Australia. Were you talking to a lot of people who were doing research and saying they need to bioplastics or any scientists or engineers? What was that process like? That is a very good question. Um, I didn't really uh, come across anyone in, well, in the spin, or the spin and all of the spin that were primarily um, so researching, I think, is reacting to this. <laughs> reacting and sorry, responding to bioplastic. But I did um, make contact with a chemist, uh, a professor of chemistry, who I had a conversation with about my bioplastic to ask them what exactly is this thing and what are the implications ecologically and you know, for longevity's sake, what exactly can it do? And we had a really uh, brilliant conversation around it, and one of the things that they, they were really excited about, they said, you have something happening here. You can make paint for children at schools. You can make, um, you can make stuff for printing with um, 3D printers. Um, they had so many brilliant ideas, and I said to them, I don't have the science know-how to make these things. Um, how can I do this? <laughs> can I collaborate with you somehow? And, he put me in touch with a couple of people who were doing work about environment and were interested in doing, um, researching materials that, you know, that are environmentally friendly. So we're still in conversation. But yes, I did talk to a few people. I also talked to curators, especially, um, like you, <laughs> who were um, a little skeptical <laughs> because of the material conservation uh, needs. Um, I spoke to some... Um, aeroscientists who were very excited because they talked about the idea of paper being such a wasteful part of their process and also energy from um, energy consumption from all the computers that they have to keep on for 24 hours you know 24 hours a day seven days a week and all of that and so they were really interested in um, talking about ways that maybe we could find solutions to those energy consumption or waste production. Um, let's see, what other specials? I talked to educational uh, experts or educators and they were equally very interested because they thought that there's prospects for pedagogical uh, learning or pedagogical um, development with this material, especially for um, grade school children, getting them involved in the process early so that they can start to engage with the material. So there was, there was a lot of there were a lot of conversations around it um, in the art field or in the art department where I was. There weren't there weren't specific people working with this kind of material, but there was a lot of interest, um, is what I can say for sure. I'm curious to know um, where you see this project going because you're in an early phase of experimentation, and I can see you know, a lot of kind of different um, veins that you're playing with from, you know, these sort of abstractions to these um, more conceptual pieces where you're creating mapping or graphing. And right. Do you have a sense of, you know, directions you're, you're going you know, artistically? Um, to an extent, yes. Um, I think my, my, my dream is to have like some agency <laughs> give me a big grant and say, hey, take this and develop it and bring in collaborators. That would be the best case scenario. However, as it may be, 
I don't have that, so I'm basically working with what I have. Um, I'm hoping to uh, continue to expand the kind of conversation that can come out of this material. I want to um, engage more participants through schools, through uh, different centers, community centers. Um, I want to get people making with that. I want to. I also hope that I can get, I can get creative on, on a larger scale. And I talked about this with my colleague Maya here on how I might get the materials to create like a larger scale piece because this has given me the courage to say if I can make something this big, then perhaps I can make something <laughs> that fills up the world. And so I'm really hopeful and thinking that my next step would be to kind of push this further. Um, not only in terms of like the social engagement, but also in terms of um, enlarging the scale in such a way that it can create an experience for people when they encounter it. So I want people to be able to wear it or, you know, <laughs> walk through it or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my dream. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that question, yes. Um, I, I very much like the possibility that these uh, gives us when it comes to uh, color interaction, transparency, light interaction with the material. Um, would you say that color-wise that's the limit that it could go? Because I can see in many places that there is some like um, hue-wise artificial like level of it in, in, in terms of color. So I'm curious what else, how, how much more you can push it in that direction and, and then like creating colors through intera like seed interaction and, and light interaction. That is, that is such an interesting idea. Um, I will take that idea and experiment with it. <laughs> I, I don't know to what extent it can do some of what you're talking about, but I think that there are potentials there and that's the call and response I'm talking about. You're immediately seeing that. I haven't seen that or thought of that before and you're responding to it and then now I'm going to respond to you <laughs> and hopefully invite you to come and see what I've done but I really enjoy that idea of sort of like what are the kinds of uh, like stained glass effect right exactly. transparencies yeah. you can create an overlap mm -hmm. and th that would be something interesting to try um, especially given what these things are doing on the glass right and, and they're so different from this side than from the other one because Absolutely. of the light interaction Yes. Yeah. Yes, indeed. indeed. That's a good, good point. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, then I was going to say, I, well, first of all, I, I appreciate you sharing this work. It's so beautiful and it's really exciting to see, like, from the early stages, like, where it's moving towards. Um, I, I love the piece on the wall and how, like, fabric it feels like. It makes you take skirts or, you know, like, you said something someone can wear. Um, but I also really love the mold. <laughs> and just, I, I think that, that idea of the two materials kind of talking to each other, but also the, like, you can't, I mean, there are ways that you can't really control how the mold is interacting with it, and how even some of the forms of the mold is taking seems to, like, feel like it's uh, copying some of the forms that are happening naturally in the way that the faces are cracked. Or, so I'm just really excited about all of it. But I know you were saying you're a little disappointed at first, but they're, they're really beautiful, funny photographs. All right. <laughs> so maybe I'll make some more moldy stuff. <laughs> yeah, I had to discard most of them, but all of them, because they were going to be potentially oh, yeah. dangerous to me and any other person that comes in. So right. that was a, <laughs> a sad ending. I have a question about, oh, a question just about sort of like the, the cyclical nature that's happening in the, the work of like, this is something that gets grown out of the earth, then it gets consumed and then there's waste and then it gets put back sort of into this alternate process and then ultimately deteriorates back into the earth again, right? So, and then but it, it makes me sort of just think about like how you, as an artist and a person <laughs> arrived at this work, like through really like the the research started 
much earlier than this, like, for, like formally right. started, right? Right. Like, the seeds were planted and sort of germinating all along, sort of like your early work. And I'm wondering if, like, arriving at this point with this body of work sort of makes you time travel in your own artistic process and revisit your own work, early work, <laughs> with a new lens and think about sort of like taking earlier processes of working with real, like actual plastic and newspaper and, and um, like revisiting, I, you know, I just, yeah. I wonder how that sort of... I, um, I completely understand your question. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Guilty. Yeah, yeah. I, I know what you mean. Um, of course, um, I have a lot of, re you know, reflection about this because, like you said, my my older, much older works didn't take into account carbon footprint per se or the impact that the work is having on the environment. Although it was visualizing the, the eco um, yes. issues, right? But it right. didn't really uh, seek to solve any problems in yeah. terms of like ecologically. Um, I, I think my goal basically is not to make anyone feel guilty or to oh, yeah. point. That, that wasn't the intention <laughs> of my question either. The, the, but I, 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 it's more in the terms of like what, what is in your entire artistic arc that sort of now feels reactivated. Like, in, in like, um, uh, ready to be re-explored, you know what I mean? Like I feel like that's kind of what research sort of does, is sort of remind us of all these past experiments sure. that have led to this point, you know? And myself. 
So we're all like forming this ecology together. There is a channel of awareness that happens where respect starts to build because we know that the molds are, are, are vibrant matter. They are alive and they live with us. And the things, our actions, basically trigger different kinds of reactions. And so we should be careful what we do, especially when it comes to waste. How is the thing, the waste we're producing, uh, affecting our larger cosmos, right? So in, in the landfill, there are a lot of chemical things that are happening, the destructive things that are happening. And so it's important for us to be aware of that, to be in kinship with everything around us so that we don't abuse stuff. We're always respectful of the materials we have when we buy stuff. We use it carefully, knowing that it came from a tree or it came from a raw material from nature. And so that kinship that we have of material, the respect, the reciprocal respect, would help us know that we can't just toss things. We shouldn't just waste things indiscriminately. So that's sort of where that idea, the lining idea comes from, the making kin. It's more poetic, but it does address the idea that, in, especially in African um, philosophy, we make keen with the earth, we make keen with the sky, we make keen with the animals. And so it, it, it engenders respect and reciprocal relationship um, that helps to kind of keep a balance within the ecology. Um, so that's sort of where it's coming from, the idea is coming from. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. questions and um, the materials I was distributing. Uh, please feel free to send me an email if you have any thoughts, responses, if you want to share any inspirations with me, do. And I'm going to make sure that it gets fed back into my process and uh, hopefully you would see another show with all the results. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it kills the plants, then I get she's not at it, so I can maybe really promote some growth. Because I can imagine making sheets of the plants. There's very plastic with seed in there. Yeah, that would be fantastic. I just put them out. That'd be awesome. Wouldn't yeah. that be fantastic? It so. really would be awesome. I love it, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's really interesting. I think about it too. I was late, so I was only touching the outside of it, but they wanted to be different inside and outside of it. They really are, so that's another interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It is amazing. It's really cool. Like, did you notice that when you're like working? Yeah. And like you're working down on the table or whatever, right? Yeah. 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 It really is great, seriously. I love it. Like, this is texture. I think I like the texture. I kind of do. Like, I don't know why I like the texture. And that's why I really like your other ones, because I just like it in general. Like, I like visually. Of it. There's a 